Hello friends, welcome back again. In our previous tutorial, we learned how to allocate memory dynamically using the functions malloc, calloc, and realloc. And we learned there another function named free which is used to deallocate memory. Here we will write a code to see how to allocate memory dynamically. So let's start. Here first we declare an array, but before that we ask user for the size of the array. And then we declare the array exactly of the same size entered by the user. So first I am going to declare a variable int n. Then I am going to ask user to enter the size printf enter the size of the array. To receive the input from user, we use a scanf function. scanf person d and then I'm person n. Now we declare the array something like this int x and within square bracket I'm going to write here n. In the declaration of array inside the square bracket we can't write a variable it will give compilation error. So this declaration is invalid. We can't supply the array size during runtime. We must specify the array size at the time of declaration. So what is the solution? We need to declare the array dynamically. Here I am going to use malloc function to allocate memory and here we allocate a block of memory for n integers. I am going to delete it in star x then we need to typecast here in star malloc in star size of int. Next we put some values to the allocated memory for that I am going to write here a for loop for i equal to 0 i less than n and then i plus plus. Here we store the number in increasing order from 1. First location we will store 1, second location we will store 2, then 3 and this process is continue. So I am going to write here x of i equal to i plus 1. Next we print the values, print f, the output is then for i equal to 0, i less than n, then i plus plus. Here we use a printf statement to print the values to the screen. Printf percent d new line and here we refer x of i. We need to declare i as an integer type variable. So I am going to write here i. Let's run the program, compile and run, enter the size of the array, I am going to enter 5, press enter and it print the number from 1 to 5. Let's run it again, enter the size of the array, now I am going to enter 10 and it print the number from 1 to 10. Now we use a calloc function instead of malloc. As we know calloc function takes two arguments, first one is number of elements and second one is size of each element. I am going to give here a comma. Another difference is that if we don't initialize any values, by default calloc function initialize 0 to all the memory location. I am going to delete this part. Now run the program, enter the size of the array, I am going to enter 5. As you can see here, it prints 0 to all the location. But malloc function initially stores some garbage value. I am going to write here malloc and here star. Run the program. Enter the size of the array, I am going to enter 5. 
you can see here it prints some garbage value okay I'm going to paste here the initialization loop again next we talk about the free function when we allocate memory dynamically it remains allocated during the lifetime of the program until we deallocate it explicitly to deallocate memory that was allocated by malloc or calloc function we have a function named free and here we pass the starting address of the memory block as argument starting address of the memory block is stored to x so I'm going to write here x what happened when this statement will execute this statement free x will erase all the data from the allocated memory actually it may be erased or may not it totally depends on your machine or compiler but it is sure that you can use this memory location again and allocate some values to this location let's see what happened when this free function execute compile and run enter the size of the array I'm going to enter 5 you can see here first two location it prints some garbage value and the remaining location it print the previous values it doesn't mean this location are not free of course this location are also free if you want you can allocate some values to this location using malloc or calloc function if we know the address we can look up the value at a particular memory location but you should read or write to your memory location only if the address is allocated to you but what if the address is not allocated to you like this here after freeing memory I'm going to modify the fourth position that is x of 3 equal to 50 now let's see what happened enter the size of the array I'm going to enter 5 you can see here 50 is printed at fourth position so this position is modified but some machine will show our program is crashed if we want to modify the value after allocated some memory then it will work properly but without allocating memory if we want to modify the value of a memory location then we don't know what happened it may be modified or may not it totally depends on your machine or compiler okay let's move to the next function I'm going to delete these two statement if we want we can extend or reduce the previously allocated memory block using a function named realloc for example here we allocate our memory block of n integers now we want to extend it to triple of its size for that I'm going to declare here another pointer in star y now we allocate memory using realloc function realloc this function takes two arguments first one is previous pointer that is x and second one is the total number of bytes we want to reallocate that is 3 into n into size of int now the question is how this function works it works in two ways first it try to extend the previously allocated memory block if contiguous free space is available if it is not possible to extend the memory block then it allocate a new memory block copy the values from previous block and deallocate the previous block to know which one is happened for our program I'm going to print here the starting address of previous block and new block print f address of previous block equal to percent d address of new block equal to percent d and here we refer x and y here I'm going to write 3n and here y of i let's run the program enter the size of the array I'm going to enter 5 as you can see here starting address of the previous block and the new block is same that means there was free space so compiler extend the previous block 
using realloc function here we allocate memory 3 n times here n equal to 5 so 3 into 5 is 15 that's why 15 memory space is allocated here but using this loop we store only 5 values that's why it prints the numbers from 1 to 5 and the remaining position stores some garbage value Similarly, you can reduce the memory size also. I am going to write here n by 2. Let's run it. Enter the size of the array. I am going to enter 5. 5 by 2 is 2.5. But here we consider only integer value. That's why it print only 1 and 2. The last thing that I want to tell you. If you want, you can pass the first argument of realloc function as null. If the first argument of realloc function is null, then it works as malloc function. It creates a new block, doesn't copy any values from previous block. This is it. This was about malloc, calloc, realloc and free function. Hope you understand. If you like this video, please share it and click on the like button on YouTube. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to our channel for more videos. Get in touch with us. Visit us on YouTube at youtube.com slash Join us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Follow us on Twitter and Google+.